Dinner Conversations is brought to you by Food for the Hungry, a relief and development organization serving those in need around the globe for more than 40 years. Help our friends at Food for the Hungry save thousands of refugee lives today by considering a generous gift. A gift that will be matched 22 times. It's incredible. Visit fh.org forward slash dinner to give now. Today our guest is Randall Goodgame. Now I had never heard of Randall because I don't have kids or grandkids. Uh -huh. And he has a ministry to children. I mean, an incredible, he's like a modern day Mr. Rogers. <laughs> and he takes scripture and puts it to music. Mm -hmm. Randall's an incredible guy. I don't have kids or grandkids either. Randall's just a friend of mine here in Nashville. And Slugs and Bugs is the name of his series, a really fun series, again, about why is it important, one, to know Scripture, not only as children, but as adults, and how he is helping families literally hide the Word of God in their hearts through music. And we have one seat left at the table, and it's yours. So let's join the conversation. So how did you become the Mr. Rogers of the Christian world? <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that what I am? Well, I that's what that I've heard. Word? I've heard that you really have a, a an incredible ministry to young people. Uh, you set scriptures to music, which mm -hmm. is not easy because it doesn't meter like a song should. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And evidently, kids are responding. Well, I, I guess so. So let me just say, since you mentioned him, Fred Rogers, a huge hero of mine. That'd me be, too. That'd be too, really? Too, too, those slippers would be too big for me to fit. <laughs> but yes, so I'm, I'm super inspired by getting to sing to kids, but also families, parents and kids together. Yeah, because you started out, I mean, Randall's, you've written songs for other Christian arts for years for yourself. Caitlin's Call. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Jenny, mm -hmm. one of our good friends, mm -hmm. Jenny Owens, and yep. which we've had on the show. And But I, I think about it like, yeah, kind of reiterating, Mark, how did you first get into the kids' music mess? Like, what first got you there? Okay, so the the doorway was a record that I made with our friend Andrew Peterson. Mm -hmm. You guys know. So he and I did a side project back in 2006, and it was just meant to be a just a side project with songs that we wrote for our kids. Mm -hmm. And then that CD got on the radar of Veggie Tales. Mm. So they called us and said, hey, would you write Silly Songs for us? We're like, yes, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So we wrote Silly Songs for Veggie Tales for a couple of years. And for Andrew, it was just something fun that we got to do. For me, it helped me realize, oh, wow, I love thinking about families, parents and kids. And it was like Veggie Tales said, here's five minutes, write a silly song. Mm -hmm. And Tens of thousands of, of families are going to sit down and watch this together. And to me, that felt like this opportunity mm. to really do something deeply meaningful. And you're, they're, they're, our job was to be silly, but I was really drawn to what that, the impact that you could have if you did have the attention of a parent and a child at the same time. Yeah. Well, in families, when I think about how slugs and bugs works musically, it's more acoustic driven. It, like I, I think it's more astute artistically than kids records that are all digitized or whatever. Uh, even the vocals when you have people like Andrew Peterson on it or Bart Millard from Mercy Me. I mean, there's adults playing into it for the kids. And so it seems to me that parents are probably less annoyed by slugs and bugs than other kids music I've experienced. That is definitely <laughs> the goal. I mean, that's, I guess that that's the lowest bar. Like, don't mm -hmm. be annoyed is the lowest bar. <laughs> what we really want is for them to go, oh my gosh, and let's play that again. That's, yeah, that's what yeah. we want. And that's what I, Ellie was here today. Ellie oh, Holcomb. Holcomb was here. And she was, I overheard her talking to you about what an impact you've had on her kids. You must hear that from a lot of parents. I, it never gets old, I'll tell you that. I know, it never it? gets old. It does. Yeah. Do you think they're saying, and more than impact on their kids, like, it's impact on, like, I don't sit in the car and listen to scripture all day. So to have that resource where I'm playing music for my kids, but then scripture is actually going through my mind and heart too. Mm -hmm. Would you say parents are part of the demographic when you're thinking about making a record? Oh, absolutely. So the last four Slugs and Bugs CDs I've made with our friend Ben Shive, mm -hmm. he and I make a list of all the people 
that we want, like individual people that we want to love this record. Hmm. And so we'll have, we'll have, you know, his, one of his daughter's name on there. We'll have my wife on there. We'll have my brother's wife, you know, down mm-hmm. in Houston. We'll have uh, my, uh, you know, my cousin, different adults and different kids. So we're thinking about specific people with specific tastes so that um, it, because the goal is to reach everybody, so that the whole family from the grandparents to the three-year-olds are all glad when someone puts it in. Well, if you're like me and you've never heard of this, I never, uh, slugs and bugs. Well, yeah, I have no children, I have no grandchildren, but many of you watching do. I would say go get it. I guess they can get it from your website. Yes, yeah, slugs, Best, which is what slugsandbugs.com. dot com. Slugsandbugs dot com. Slug. Now, Where did you come up with yeah. slugs and bugs? It it was from a lyric. There's a song that. I wrote it, it goes, God made slugs and bugs and rats and bats and nasty bees that don't say please. They'll sting your elbows and your knees if you chase them. If you just what? If you chase, <laughs> if you chase them. Oh, if you chase them. <laughs> I want to make but, sure I don't do that. I mean, but I didn't start writing the scripture songs. I, the, I wrote silly songs kind of like that for a couple years for slugs and bugs. And then what got me to the scripture songs was I was, we were homeschooling and it was my job to t- teach the kids Bible and music. Wow. Those are my two jobs. Wow. So a big part of Bible, right? Memorizing scripture. Seems sure. like I can figure this out. No. Good. No. It was it was so hard. It is hard. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. We all know it's hard for us. But then mm-hmm. as a parent, you think, okay, I'm going to teach my kids and they're going to memorize scripture. And it just didn't work. So there was a need. So there was a need. And so I started writing uh, melodies. What's the first one you wrote? The first one was, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Wow. So trust in <laughs> the Lord with all your heart. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And the kids pick up on that. They learned it. Yeah. And, and the, the, the thing that they kept, they would memorize a verse for a week, but then two weeks later, they would have forgotten the one from two weeks that before. The right. But the morality makes it. But mm-hmm. what, we, what we found was a month later, two months later, they were still remembering the, ver- the verses. Mm-hmm. So, and then... Since it worked so well for them, it just made sense to want to try it. Well, making the scriptures meter like we think a song should do. If we're if you're gonna teach a songwriting course, learning how to meter would be part of it. For sure. So scriptures, what what scripture has been the biggest challenge? <laughs> oh to, man. And, Jesus this, wept. No, no, no. I'm, surely. <laughs> like and also how do you choose which scriptures to use? Well, right uh, usually I'm thinking about themes. So this past record, the one that comes out, um, that's just come out, uh, Sing the Bible, Volume 3, the theme is the life and words of Jesus. So things that he said or things about him or his mission, and that seemed like they would fit together, um, That things that he said that I want my kids to remember first. You know, mm-hmm. I'm thinking about my children and then all the other families that listen to Slugs and Bugs, their children. So something as simple as, I am the vine, you are the branches. And then the verse that goes through there, abide in me as I in you. And as the branch will not bear fruit by itself unless you abide in the vine. But then so simple passages like that, all the way to the passage from uh, Colossians, he is the image of the invisible God, firstborn among all creation Mm -hmm. and so on. I mean, I can... I can tell you personally, I always say all these scripture songs, they serve me first because I wind up memorizing yeah. all the scripture, which I never would have done if I hadn't, if I didn't yeah, do it you know, I mean, for others. I want copies. Yep. Oh man, well, I brought some. Get copies, we can memorize scriptures the easy way. I brought the, some. I brought some. Oh, good. Me. Yeah, I, th- I think I about, love memorizing scripture, but does. I do love memorizing the message because it's easier for me to understand. Do you think it's more musical mm-hmm. in I some think ways? it's more poetic Mm -hmm. for me like when he says you know uh that line about learn the unforced rhythms of grace Mm. you know are you tired worn out burned out on religion come Mm. to me get away with me and you'll recover your life wow i'll show you how to take a real rest walk with me work with me watch how i do it 
learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I mean, the man was yeah. the man's a poet. That's, that's the come unto me, you who are weary. Yeah, come unto me, all who are weary. And yeah. Wow. Well, in, in a world of like uh, relativity, I think we live in a culture that there's a lot of relativity, relative truth. Now, what, wait, wait, what is relative truth? Mm -hmm. uh, relative truth be like your own truth. I so don't there's, believe there's not, there's I truth agree. And there's, yeah, wrong. We would agree on that. Culturally, I don't think that's the agreement. Oh, you right, mean the right, culture? Right. Culture. Oh, Today yeah. is culture. Yeah, they're crazy. Would, would you agree with that? And is this part of helping raise children? Why is truth so important? You yes, know, and how do you yeah. find? How do we get back to that where people know the truth? Well, and what is the? I mean, I, when I was growing up, we didn't have craziness going on. You know. Well, I mean, they, at least they kept it hidden. Yeah. <laughs> That's better. If you, no. I'm <laughs> oh, yeah. We didn't hear it on the news. Yeah. <laughs> no, but. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I should let your question no, no. play. That's what was or it? Linger. I see. What you, I know what you're saying, though. I may, and maybe it means that that as parents that know that truth, there is absolute truth. Jesus is the truth. Mm -hmm. um, that we just have to work that much harder to make sure that we we exhibit that trust mm -hmm. and faith in Him in the home, so that uh, kids, you know, they. They go out into the world, but they come home, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I think one of the things that can sometimes help lead kids to leave the church is they, they at home, the home ends up just reflecting the culture too. Yeah, sure. And so yeah. why why cling to the rules if it doesn't really impact the, the way that we are? Sure. Right. Or so, no one told me they were important even. Mm -hmm. I heard them, but no one said this is important because... And music is such a generous medium, I think about. Like, the Bible has been used in toxic ways in some people's lives. That's another reason sometimes people get a bad view of Scripture or a bad view of God as represented in the Scripture. I feel like teaching Scripture through music is a very gracious Brilliant. you know, way mm -hmm. of... Have you found that to be true, like with your kids or even from your upbringing, being like, this is the way the Bible was used that I wouldn't agree with. Music is giving us a way... Mm -hmm. To express it with grace, it is. It's it's safer than just making someone read. You know, if you say, "Hey, let's learn this song," mm -hmm. it feels a little less intimidating. Yeah. And I mean, you're certainly joining a an ancient tradition. You know. Well, yeah. how cool would that be to have a kid? And, and I could just see when you were singing the song about conquer more than mm -hmm. conquer. Mm -hmm. We are more than conquerors. I could just see a little kid on that uh, con just singing to the top of his lungs. Mm -hmm. Like I used to do between Nanny and Papa. I, that's before <laughs> you. That's back when we didn't care about our kids so much, and you could stand up in the front seat. You remember mm, that? Oh yeah, sure. Oh, you might be too young for that, but <laughs> no, no. But boy, I, I, I'm, I'm here thankful. To I, is the is there anyone happen. else doing what you're doing? I mean, I really, I know there are. Uh, uh, sure. Young, children's music, children's and, ministers, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there and there are also writers, publishers yeah. that do. But mm -hmm. a guy that goes around and just creates four children. I don't know that many, do you? There's guys out there, like yeah. Seeds Family Worship, guys here mm -hmm. in town, they do a great job. And, um, well, that's great. But, uh, but I mean, you can't have too much of that, for sure. No. Well, and I want to take it back to what you said about More Than Conquerors. Can you imagine seeing a kid standing up singing that? They're singing it now, maybe without as much personal experience with what it means to be more than a conqueror through Christ yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe they haven't experienced certain hardships. I mean, I, as a child, it was not until... I was in college that I really experienced personal personal experiences that caused me to doubt or had where I had to lean on my faith yeah. and really trust yeah. and learn to trust in God. I think about that if I learned that as an 8-year-old, I'm more than a conqueror, you mm -hmm. know, through Jesus, how that will come back to me. Mm -hmm. You because of how you are tutoring kids in scripture through music, I would probably end up singing that chorus as a 21-year-old. It would mean a lot to more lean to lean on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't that kind of the point of hiding scripture in our heart is yeah that is that is the I mean a huge motivator for me is knowing that these kids just like you know when you when you teach your kids at home like parents we have to keep in mind that this is a long game right you're going to have to say it again and again mm -hmm. and again and then suddenly they're going to be 19 and it'll just be part of who they are mm -hmm. and same thing with these songs you know if you just sing them over and over and over eventually they just become part of who you are. And there's something about music that, it, not that it means more necessarily, because it still means the same thing, but there's some kind of alchemy that happens 
with singing. I mean, it, that's what, right? That's what the angels are doing forever. They're singing. <laughs> they're not just saying, holy, holy, holy. They're singing it. Mm -hmm. And so there's something unique about song. That, that song is a good example. The we are more than conquerors. I can read that passage. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, the future, any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation shall be able to separate us from the love of Jesus Christ our Lord. I can read that, still get a little chills, but if I sing it, I have to keep it together mm. because of the, the meaning that is sort of pumping out yeah. while, you know, it's, 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 there's something else that's happening. There's that passage in Ephesians that says, you know, I pray that you um, will, oh, what's, how's that, whatever it says, the no, a, a knowledge that you grasp the gospel, oh, yeah. a knowledge beyond knowledge, where there's just something other than just knowledge that's happening. There's mm -hmm. something else. That's how he wants us to know the Lord. And I think there's something that's ha that happens with music that that's similar that happens. It connects us in that place. Do you Have mind? you found a scripture that you haven't been able to figure out how to make it work? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, every time I write, every time I go into making a record, I have more scriptures than I could ever fit. And yeah. then some of them, you know, I'm working at it and I'm working at it and I'm working at it and I get it. And then sometimes, just I not just, yet. It's just not not yet. That's yeah. a good way to put yeah. it. Not yet. I first go. I don't like that scripture. Well, isn't it great? <laughs> what a great co-writer you're working with. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. My co-writer take all the royalties. <laughs> yes. That's, right. That's a correct. If you pick yes. the right translation. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Certain translations are more expensive than others. That's true. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine or nakedness, danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more. death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ. in all
Dinner Conversations is brought to you by Food for the Hungry, a relief and development organization serving those in need around the globe for more than 40 years. And right now, Food for the Hungry is helping hundreds of thousands of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh. Nearly one million refugees fled from their home in Myanmar to escape violent persecution. Refugees like Nihab, who crossed the border with her husband and six children. While safe from violence, refugee camp conditions are horrific, and Nihab's children are always at risk of diseases, many of them deadly. Food for the Hungry is providing medical care and treated Nihab's three-month-old baby who fell ill with pneumonia. There are thousands more like Nihab who need our help. You can join Food for the Hungry and us in providing life-saving treatment by donating today. Even better, your gift will be matched 22 times when you give at fh.org forward slash dinner. So $25 becomes 550, 50 becomes 1100 and so on. Countless families urgently need our help. Donate to Food for the Hungry today and your generous gift will literally help save lives. It's an incredible opportunity we have, and I think of Jesus' own words in Matthew 25 when he says, what you have done to the least of these, you have done unto me. So give today at fh.org forward slash dinner. You were saying something about Gloria Gaither, um, talking about like kids, I think sometimes in the context of kids. She contends that kids, like my college, professors told me that King James Version, which was what we always used, is on a third grade reading level. Mm -hmm. And Gloria says, we don't need to dumb down anything for children. They can get it. They're smarter than we think, and they love big words. Mm -hmm. Sure, you yeah. Like conqueror, what a great And word. mysterious concepts. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. And <laughs> I really think that they have been, if they, that's why I think babies are born mute, because if they could talk, they'd tell us what God was like. I think they come from God. Mm. Of course, I believe the Bible says that. And that's why they have to come mute. And what you're doing is early on reminding them where they come from mm -hmm. with those scriptures, reminding mm -hmm. them of home. Well, you know, <laughs> it reminds me of Luke 18. Actually, it's in all three of the first gospels where it says, Jesus says to his disciples, unless you come like a child, you yep. can't. You can't come exactly. into the kingdom of heaven. And for me, that that means a lot of things, but that sense of wonder. Well, maybe. there's yeah, wonder for sure. But also, I mean, I hadn't thought about the fact that they're the mute, <laughs> but I think a lot about how they're messy and needy. Yeah. And they 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 run to you and ask you what they need. They tell you what they need and they, they without mm -hmm. reservation, yeah, they're not yeah. shy about it. And they, guileless. Ex they expect you to provide for them. Right. So all of those ways the Lord is saying, unless you are needy for me, are willing to be messy in front of me, Ooh. are um, willing to tell me what you you know need right away. And think about how children are so quick to forgive. Yeah. <laughs> children, my kids, like I'm a yell at them and then later be like, I'm sorry. I they, think they're one always more like, thing. I forgive you. They are is that they you got when it says come as a child. My pastor said one time, and I love this. You got to forget everything you think you know about God. We're mm. starting with a clean slate. Jesus mm. said, "Come to me like a child," because mm -hmm. you know He did. He had to correct a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everything you've been told about yeah. God, like to actually reopen the Scripture to say, like. A desire to discover him instead of saying, "Oh, this is what I've been told Scripture says about you." Open it up. Who are you? Mm -hmm. You know, and and which I think is the clean slate idea. So people say uh -huh. that you should. You know, a lot of times people are tempted to dumb things down for kids, and you know, there's that quote that's often attributed to different philosophers or theologians about the gospel is deep enough mm -hmm. for an elephant to swim in, but shallow enough for a little baby to play. I love it. But the I think where we trip up as adults is we we think that it's complex and we want to dumb it down because we think that it's something to know mm. instead of someone to know. Ooh. Kids mm. are always mm. they're ready to meet you, you know. And yeah, it's going to be too complex if you want them if you want them to learn a bunch of things. Yeah. But if you say this is your savior, he loves you and he knows you. Come on. That's brother. your he, he's this is a person. Yeah. Then 
you, they get to grow and understand the gospel at the level that they're supposed to, at whatever age, whatever age they I are. I applaud you, and I pray to God you got a good 20 years left to reach Just the kids. <laughs> Children come to me. Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Let the children come to me. Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever will not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Truly I say to you, whoever will not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Brum, bum, bum, brum, bum, bum, bum. Let the children come to me. Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Let the children come to me. Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. You can help save thousands of lives by giving a generous gift of Food for the Hungry today. Your gift will directly help Rohingya refugees who are currently living in dire, poverty-stricken refugee camp conditions in Bangladesh. And get this, your gift will be matched 22 times for an exponential impact. Food for the Hungry is on the ground now providing medical treatment to hundreds of thousands of these vulnerable children and their families. This is the example that has been set for us by Jesus, that we would help our neighbors in their time of need. And this is what Food for the Hungry is doing to help relieve the refugee crisis in Bangladesh. So you can give today, partner with Dinner Conversations as we partner with Food for the Hungry yes. by giving generously at fh.org forward slash dinner. To learn more about Dinner Conversations, visit dinner-conversations.com. And while you're there, check out our Season 1 DVD with all of our past episodes and some bonus stuff, as well as check out these cool show mugs. Yeah. So when we have our next conversation, you can have coffee with us. Let's get back to the conversation. When did you come to know the Lord personally? So I grew up in the Baptist church, yeah. always uh, going to church with my parents. But I remember, you know, as a Baptist kid, you're always hearing, you know, say the sinner's prayer, come down the aisle and all <laughs> oh, yeah. that stuff. And, and I had never done that. And I remembered, I remember being in science class in fifth grade and I got picked on a bunch and wasn't happy. And I remember sitting like about halfway back in the class and just bowing my head and saying the prayer, Lord, I, I need, I need you. This, this must be what it means to realize that I need Wow. You know, like whatever. I'm sure it was in a fifth grader's language. Sure, sure. But I, and I raised my eyes, and the heavens opened. <laughs> <laughs> the earth shook. And, it, yeah. and the clouds said slugs. And, and you yeah. had something below ever since. <laughs> no. uh, a, a last kind of question. What have you learned? I'm really interested in this. As you've incorporated scripture into music for children, and then see children on the road, seeing your own children learn scripture and incorporate their lives. What have you learned about God through observing children or through your relationships mm. with children? Your own children? You see a lot of children. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, um, definitely I have learned his long suffering. Because as a parent, you know you're constantly having to be patient. And I know that, that every time I have to be patient with my kids, I have to be confronted with the reality that that's, the Lord has to be much, 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 much more patient with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so for sure, they, and uh, actually, what comes to mind is something that I, I mentioned earlier, but um, like when I play my concerts, um, it's always kind of messy. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, the, the children, there's always some kid losing it. You know, like at least one kid. And I don't know why, maybe, you know, like he's uh, is hungry, he didn't get his nap. Or, you have to uh, sing over that. Yeah, well, so, but what I, when I see, what ends up happening is like a mom or a dad or somebody will end up scooping him up, taking him out of the room and going back into some room somewhere. And then maybe eventually it brings him back in. And what I know has happened in those minutes where he's been gone is whatever that parent, whichever it was, they took him out into a room and they just held him and they patted him and they comforted him or her and said, Oh, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Whatever they needed, brought him whatever they needed, whether it was something to eat or just a hug or just the time to settle down and they bring him back in. And I think every time that happens that that's what the Lord does for me. Mm. So watch another parent's, has been a gift for me in that way. And it reframes, for me, disturbances in a concert because um, I see that and I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord, for the reminder of what you're like. So I'd say that's, in a way, that's how both kids, something that parents and kids are constantly reminding me of. (laughs) That's good. That's beautiful. Do you need a hug? Could I have a hug? (laughs) I always need a hug. Let's sing. It's always a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Would you be mine? If you don't know the words, don't sing it. Would you be mine? That's all I know about. All right, that's, uh, yeah. yeah. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood. <laughs> Is that part of with it? you? Now, Mr. Rogers wasn't around when you were a kid, was he? Nah, but I overhear it. Let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say good night. Would, would you be mine? Oh. <laughs> Could you, you be mine? mine? Won't you be my neighbor? I, know I that loved him. him. Yeah, man. It's a great oh. melody, too. It's kind of yeah, it is jazzy. Great. He wrote it. Yeah. He did? Yeah. Thanks, Mark. I want to learn them, too. Yeah. Yeah. You got 15 more to go? I was saying. Oh. It's my phone. <laughs> I know that song too. That means it's it's all over and I I got to go. Dinner Conversations is brought to you by Food for the Hungry, a relief and development organization serving those in need around the globe for more than 40 years. Help our friends at Food for the Hungry save thousands of refugee lives today by considering a generous gift. A gift that will be matched 22 times. It's incredible. Visit fh.org forward slash dinner to give now. Thank you.